Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give you my initial thoughts on the FlySight Falcon goggles. I know there's a lot of interest in these goggles because um, they're very similar to the Fat Sharks, and there's been a few reviews already out there that have been pretty positive. And I would have to say, for the most part, my review is going to be fairly positive as well. And I'll go over sort of the pros and cons here. I'm not going to go over every little detail of these goggles like some of the other reviews. I, I don't like long videos, and I'll just get some of this stuff out of the way first. You get a nice case, of course, and you get a bunch of stuff in here. Some thinner foam, which I think I probably will switch to. You get a, a battery case for some 18650 lithium-ion batteries, and it comes with a barrel plug. And you get your AV cables and some uh, XT60 to barrel plug adapters for the um, goggles so that you can either charge the battery here or use different batteries. So that's about it there for the accessories and it does come with a very good manual. I'm not going to go over the manual but the manual is pretty good. Anyone should be able to figure out how to use it just by reading it. There's no issues there. Get this out of the way. Okay so I've been using the uh, FlySight goggles on, on and off I'll be and switching between that and the my daily driver, my Fat Shark Dominator V3s. Um, it does not come with this receiver module. In fact, it doesn't come with any module at all. It, just, it comes just like the Fat Sharks do. Uh, it doesn't come with any module. I'm using the uh, Yishin uh, Pro 58 module in my Fat Sharks and with the, the new uh, Achilles Plus firmware. And then this is the module that I was previously using in the Fat Sharks. This is the real ACC RX 5808 module. The diversity module this also has uh, I think the version 1 or 1.1 of the Achilles firmware so a uh, very good receiver um, basically the reception is going to be the same no matter which goggle you use because it's based on the, this receiver so uh, if you want to see a receiver review I'll put uh, some video cards in the corner you guys can check out that I'm not going to cover that in this video but reception is good on these on these modules it doesn't really matter which one you use uh, most of these modules are going to be pretty good and you get good reception. Now the DVR on here, there's a little micro SD card slot here. Basically, as far as I can tell, it's pretty much the same as the one that's on the Fat Sharks. I'm not sure what, te what DVR technology they're using, but it records at about 8 to 10 megabits, a pretty low bit rate, so and standard uh, VGA format 640 by 480. Um, yeah, nothing two different between the DVRs there. I would say that they're fairly equivalent. Uh, in terms of other features, the HDMI in, same thing that you get on the Fat Sharks, you get that on the Fly Sight. Uh, you get a little on-off switch for the fan instead of the, the plug here on the Fat Sharks. And then this is a little button here for turning on your fan. So you you, you can use a battery that doesn't have a balance there because there's no there's no balance there here, it's just a plug. Let's see some of the other things here of note. On the Fat Sharks, you have individual uh, diopter adjustments for each eye, whereas on the Fly Sight, it's a single dial, and that will uh, change your diopter distance, the IPD adjustment. You can see they move together, so if your eyes are not perfectly aligned, I guess it will be a little bit off. The other thing, though, is that the uh, diopters it's, uh, inserts here uh, for people that have bad eyesight, like myself, uh, you have to put the um, you have to take the faceplate off stick the diopters in and then put the face back back, back on. That does uh, make it more uh, less less convenient to take them in and out, but it does make them more secure. They won't slide out, although I really haven't had that problem with my Fat Sharks. They, they tend to stay in. Now in terms of the face plate itself and the fit, very similar to my Dominator V3s. So if you look at both these face plates side by side, pretty similar in height and also in terms of width, they're pretty similar. You can see they're almost, uh, almost the same. Now the one difference that is a negative for me is that there's these indentations on the side here that you don't get on the Fat Sharks. It's a, it's a straight up and down here. And you do feel this on the side of your head or your temples because it, it does push that in. And I do get a little bit of light leakage in the corners, uh, even with this uh, thick foam. So I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe they just went for a different design on the faceplate. I'm not exactly sure, but it seems unnecessary. I'm not really sure why they put that in there. Um, and it does, it's not that it's super uncomfortable, it's just that it is a little bit noticeable. Uh, although I, th I think that if I use this continuously, I probably would get used to it eventually. The other thing to note is that 
uh, the flexi goggles are lighter, even with the module in here, than uh, my Dominator V3s. And I don't know what the other Fat Sharks weigh in terms of like the, the HD4s, etc. Maybe they're similar weight, maybe they're different, I don't know. I just know that my Fat Shark Dominator V3s weigh, just, they do or feel heavier than these flashlights. These flashlights feel pretty light compared to the Fat Sharks. And a couple of other things that are uh, positive, I can't really show you, but uh, there's like an on-screen display. When you change your uh, brightness and contrast here with the dial, those numbers do show up in the screen, so you know what brightness and contrast setting you're currently on and what you're changing it to. Whereas on the Fat Sharks, I don't know what's going on. It's uh, I'm constantly kind of moving it back and forth, trying to figure out uh, if I'm if it's increasing or decreasing, or what value it's on, or where in the sort of spectrum of brightness or contrast I happen to be in. Whereas uh, these goggles will tell you in the on-screen display, which is, I think that's a positive and a negative on the Fat Sharks. Now in terms of the uh, image quality and uh, clarity of uh, the actual screens themselves, uh, I believe that the uh, resolution is the same on both of these. Uh, they're both 16.9 native, and the image quality, I would say, is fairly comparable, if not, I mean, I can barely tell the difference. They're, I would say that the image is very good on the fly site, just as good as what's on the fat shark, which you see there. I think it's like an 832 by 4 or something resolution, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now the one thing that is another positive on the fly site is that you can change the aspect ratio from 16 9 to 4 3. So if you're one of those aspect ratio junkies and you're flying with a 4 3 camera and you don't want to be looking at a 16 9 aspect ratio image, you can change that in this goggle on the fly. And it just takes a three second button press of this button here and I'll switch back and forth between 4.3 and 16.9. So I did try that out and uh, for example, I was flying the Micro Predator as a 4.3 camera um, and you get a perfectly uh, normal 4.3 aspect ratio image in the goggles here. Now in order to do that, since the screen is a native 16.9 screen, it's actually cropping the sides off. So basically just puts black bars on the sides of the image and then you get, that's how you get the 4.3 image. So, and I, I, I don't know if that's a, a necessarily a good thing because I know that some people that are that want the the full resolution of the screen and the full field of view um, with a 4.3 camera, I would say for those guys are really sticklers on that, they should probably go with the, uh, I think they're the HD3s or the HD4s, I don't know. It's the, the highest and most expensive fat shark goggle that has the widest field of view and that one is a native 4.3 screen on those goggles. So for those guys that are, really want the, the full experience of the 4.3, that would be my recommendation. Although personally I've never tried the uh, HD3 so couldn't tell you if that's a good experience. And I, I, know, I do know that from secondhand knowledge that the field of view is very wide on the HD3s. Because the screen is cropped on here, you do get the 4.3 image, but because it's cropped, the field of view is not as wide. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, one more thing that I forgot to mention is that on the flyside goggles, there's no bay here on the other side, like there is on the fat sharks, and this is for the head tracker unit. I know that some people use this bay here for the forge diversity module. We have a one one uh, receiver over here and another one over here. Uh, in the case of the fly site, you can't use that module because there's no bay on this side. So if you if you want to use the forge diversity module with the use of the bay on this side, this, this goggle won't do. But for all the other modules, um, they should fit in here just fine. Now I'm using this uh, 3D printed case here for the RX5080. It's actually meant for the fat shark goggles. I don't think there are any 3D prints for the fly site yet, but there probably will be at some point. You can see here that this this edge here is exposed. I'm sure it won't take very much to modify something and uh, make a, a nice case for this that will actually completely cover up this and give it a good appearance. So I, that's the reason I haven't replaced this yet because I'm waiting for um, an, a case specifically for the, the fly sight goggles and then I'll replace this case so that this, this area here isn't exposed. But I imagine since this, this module fit in here no problem, Pretty much all the other ones out there, like the Furious FPV uh, module, um, the Forge, uh, all those will probably fit in here. The ones that are diversity in terms of the both antennas on the one side. Okay, so I already know what everyone's going to be asking me is, which one would I buy? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think that I have to use these fly side goggles a little bit more to really form that opinion. If I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, I, you know, I really like my fat sharks, and I, I, one of the things I don't like about the fitment is this notch here that does bother me. So, if you were to ask me today, right now, which one would I buy? I would just, I would just stick with the Dominator V3s. Now, if you asked me if I've never had fat sharks before, or if I have to have the ability to switch between 16.9 and 4.3, you know, if you really have a, like, if you have like, you know, say some 16.9 cameras and some 4.3 cameras, you want to have the ability to switch back and forth. I don't think there's a lot of goggles that have that ability to, to switch between 16.9 and 4.3 on the screen image. So this might be one of your limited options for that, or you just have to either go with a 16.9 goggle or a 4.3 goggle. Now, I think that you know, if I continue to use this over time, I might, you know, end up saying this is a better deal. Um, but in terms of price, they're fairly similar in price. I'd say I think they run 300 bucks for each right now, and that's of course without any modules. So you have to add the cost of a module. And yeah, it's like um, hard to say which one I would get right now. Hard. It's hard. Also, it's also hard to know what the customer service is like from this company. I think Flysight is a new. Uh, new company on the market. The quality of the goggle itself is is pretty pretty good. I would say comparable to Fat Shark, if not better. Uh, whether or not this will last over the long haul, uh, I guess only you know, day to day use will will be able to tell me that. So I've only been using this for about a week and a half or so. So you know my opinion is still pretty fresh, and I think that I have to spend more time with this to you know see for sure. That this is better than this one, or it really doesn't matter. I think at this point, I'd go. You know, either one would probably be adequate for anybody. Um, they're both good goggles, so uh, I think that's one thing that's been kind of a downer for a lot of the uh, alternative fat shark style goggles that have been coming to the market. Is they've all kind of they wanted to be really different, and so they had a lot of these like weird features and stuff. And and I think that's a negative because if you're really different than Either you're gonna people are gonna really love those differences, or they're gonna really hate them because people are mostly familiar with the fat sharks. That's that's their experience. Uh, obviously, if you're dealing with someone that's never flown FPV before and they've never purchased goggles, never worn fat sharks, they might have a completely different opinion about these goggles. So, you know, we'll have to see how well this does in the long term. But I, there, there's a lot of positives going for this. It's just that because they're so similar in price, it's hard to say that you know. You should definitely go for the fly sight. I'd say that if the fly sights, if you see them on sale, say fifty, seventy-five dollars less than the fat sharks here, the um, Dominator V3s, then yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good deal. I'd go for that just because of price and because they're so similar. Um, the other thing is like I'm, I'm comparing the V3s to this. If you're comparing this to say like the more expensive, I think the HD threes. Those are, you know, those are like around five hundred dollars. So quite a bit more expensive than this. So, you know, if you really are liking the four three uh, uh, aspect of the screen here, the switchability, then obviously this is a much better deal in that in that respect in terms of the the four three ability. Although you just don't get the the immersiveness and the wide field of view when you have the four three experience on this goggle versus say the HD three. So that's you know that's something I can't really speak to personally because I've never use the HD3s on a daily basis, but that's just my speculation based on things I've heard about the HD3s. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for uh, this initial review on these Flyside goggles. I am um, going to continue to use these. I think that they have a lot of potential as a al good alternative to uh, the fat sharks out there. And uh, I will have a follow-up video. You know, do let me uh, know if you have any questions about this and I will try and address those in a future video, but um, yeah, perhaps if I miss something, they definitely let me know. But I think I've covered most of the things that I thought were important, um, at least from my perspective. If you have any questions that are, or any other thoughts that are more important from your perspective, uh, please do share them in the comments below. But yeah, I, I would say positive. It's definitely uh, worth a look, and uh, whether or not you should buy it. Uh, I think that this, I'm going to have to spend a little more time with this to say, yeah, this is definitely better than this. But I think even over the long run, I'm probably going to be, you know, uh, 
split between one or the other. But then again, I'll have to keep using this. So I'll just keep keep uh, I'll just keep using this for the next uh, few months or so, and I'll come back with a a long term uh, review of this, uh, say in about uh, two three months, and I'll let you know. Anyway, guys, hope you find this video useful, helpful. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.